Okay, so we're recording now. Fabio, the floor's yours. Hi everyone, welcome to this March 26th, uh, 2024 uh, community call. We're a small group today and cozy, but not, uh, but very excited group. <laughs> um, so as oh. usual, let's go through, uh, I don't think we have intros. Um, we have one announcement. Nicholas, you want to okay. talk to it? Yeah, uh, PyScript 2024 3, 1, uh, 2, sorry, is, uh, was out uh, uh, this morning, Euro time. Um, so just highlighting the fact that we have three major updates. The first one is an update to the new Fetch API so that it's now uh, as we discussed. So that's cool. Uh, thank you for all the feedback and thank you, uh, Andrea, for, for making that such a fast uh, update. Um, the second one is that now um, you can specify uh, zip files or tar zip files um, as sources for the file system. So you don't have to have like millions of, uh, of, of sources. You can just stick it in a zip file. And if you have a destination directory with a star at the end of it, it will unpack it into into that yeah exactly i can see uh, andrea is going full on with the emojis today uh, uh just you wait when you're talking matey uh and the last one um the last one um what was the last one the last one was the ffi um so uh damien has been doing a lot of work on micropython and uh, he has moved the namespace for the FFI in MicroPython, and this makes sense, under micropython.ffi. Um, so we now have pyodi.ffi and micropython.ffi, and what we have done is unified both of those, so you get the right FFI, uh, under the pyscript.ffi namespace. Yes, exactly. So, uh, <laughs> so I notice it doesn't do the right thing when I gesture. Oh, never mind. Anyway, so that's that's it in a nutshell. We've updated the docs. There are various other kind of like more technical behind the scenes things, uh, like updates into uh, in, in PolyScript and MicroPython and things like that. But it's a, it's a good release and more to come. Uh, also, just so that you know, uh, PyDi have accepted just merged a request uh, for uh, 2JS allowing us to uh, use an object literal instead of a map as the end result so when that lands um, good things should happen as well and we'll be cutting a new release of PyScript to, to, to update um, version of PyDive that's available as well um, but that depends on them that's it that's the announcement Woohoo! awesome um, actually one thing thing actually the only thing i would comment here is on the release notes um i wonder so i feel like we're, we're putting polyscript and pyscript separating the two be, which i think makes sense especially for us uh, i just wonder if for not too technical folks or people actually um that don't know, even know what polyscript is is if it's a confusing thing so just throwing out there maybe there's a different format where we specify yeah. that is part of polyscript but at the same time we don't put it right there in front of yeah. of everyone yeah. um anyway yeah. thoughts yeah we could just move the yeah exactly we'll do it differently next time uh, cool. uh, to me it was um uh, badly formatted <laughs> hint <laughs> about what we, what happened behind the scene because PolyScript is true. People using PyScript should never care about PolyScript. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, those changes were there and landed yeah. <laughs> in PyScript as side effect. So um, it, it was me suggesting that and. I apologize because I, I fully understand your point. And uh, yes, PolyScript should not be mentioned when we release PyScript and probably should do a better job. I, I myself- No, no, no need to apologize, like, <laughs> honestly. It's like, okay. But it, it, uh, there are users that yeah. still are mm -hmm. using both things whenever that's convenient. And so, um, 
Yeah, because it, it, if you follow the history on GitHub too, it, it's like it landed somewhere, and then in, in PyScript we have update PolyScript to the latest thing. So for me, it's a kind of yeah. um, I, I think... a reminder that there are technologies or other uh, modules behind the scene. And uh, but yeah, I fully agree. We should not say what happened behind the scene. We should say what what we released. And we are confident that it's going to work. So, sorry about yeah. that. No, so, no, no, it's good, honestly. Sorry, I, I didn't mean to. Like, it's not a negative critic. It, it's really just how to try and, and make it easier to read. A good one, because we don't want to confuse our users even more as about what the hell is that. It's <laughs> like, we don't care. But it, it, should be, it should be merged into what's possible in PyScript now. And uh, so... Point taken, yeah. and uh, next time there won't be any PolyScript reference. No worries. Nicholas, you wanted to say something. Uh, I was just going to say, I, I, if I were a PyScript user, I would want to know that MicroPython had been updated. If I was a PyScript user, I'd want to know PyDide was at this particular version. And likewise, uh, if I'm an advanced PyScript user, I'd like to know that, you know, PolyScript has been updated in that way. That I think the problem is, is that we put all those deeply technical things at the top <laughs> and then the pie script things when perhaps you could have put the pie script things at the top and then if you're interested in more of the gory technical details blah 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 blah, blah. and i think maybe we should do that going forward but honestly it's so such a trivial thing um you know uh, it, it's just feedback from fabio you know it's not a criticism as he said so um yeah no agreed the the, the problem anyway we can work together on a format yeah the, the thing about what you said is, or, or my problem here is when I read it and I try to put myself as in the non-technical user shoes, I read PolyScript, even if it's in the bottom, do I, I read PolyScript and I think, do I, can I use that in PyScript proper? Can I use it in the PyScript config or is it something that I need to use in PolyScript, right? Like just that motion. Anyway. We can post on that. I was just really um, raising that up for the next time. It was a good call. Cool. If we don't have anything else on the matter, then let's move on um, and go to the agenda items. Nicholas, first one is yours around the docs. Yeah. Okay. So the docs. Uh... The, the docs are both comprehensive and annoying at the same time. Um, and there are certain niggles and things such as search works when I run it locally, but not when it's been deployed via our GitHub actions and things like that. So something is happening. It needs investigating. And essentially, I would like to suggest that we as a PyScript community spend some time, maybe a week we designate as the week of loving your docs. And rather than trying to write a whole bunch of new code, we just go through, <laughs> go over the code that we've got and make sure we've documented it right. And some people have said, could we have tutorials or example apps that show a particular feature, that sort of thing. So I noticed when, um, and this is thanks to Andrea, uh, the JavaScript uh, stuff that I contributed to the docs just today uh, was based on some work that Andrea did. And Andrea provided a whole bunch of examples of this is how this works, this is how that works. And that's all kind of hosted on PyScript.com. So all of this sort of stuff. And if we have a plan going into that week, we kind of know what we're doing and we can coordinate and, you know, engage with the community and things like that. So I'd just like to suggest that we, we should do that perhaps sometime in April, uh, which is next month, because in May, PyCon happens. And whenever PyCon happens, we've got talks about PyScript, people are going to have a look, they're going to find our docs, and wouldn't it be nice if they were nice docs and things like that. So um, that's basically it. Um, so I'm just throwing it out there. I'm going to kind of drive that, you know, for those of us within Anaconda, we can talk about it and organizing it and plan it and all of that sort of stuff just to make sure that we're all on the same page. But it'd be nice to just show the docs some love, give it a big cuddle and go there 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 it's all right it's not that bad <laughs> and make it work for us so that's it yeah makes makes a lot of sense thank you um cool anything else on the topic all right yeah I, for what's worth I, I agree that would be good to to focus um i would be good to 
to actually prepare it though like yeah. uh, open a bunch of issues uh related to specific things that we need to do so exactly. um, we're on the yeah. same page and maybe an umbrella maybe an umbrella you yeah. should just collect them would be yeah. good anyway awesome good, great call nicholas thank you next one andrea is that also related to your demo yes just realized my demo is broken so <laughs> let me show my screen <laughs> At least to explain the issue. Um, we had in more than one occasion, uh, I can count at least this. Um, no, this is not the issue. Sorry. This um, is the issue. So <clears throat> there are people using empty input in, uh, in um, worker terminal. Mm -hmm. And that basically catches up the latest output <laughs> that was produced by a print. So this goes into this for whatever reason. And uh, I filed an issue. Um, where is it? Yeah. I filed an issue in the mainstream upstream uh, third party plugin. Um, basically, it doesn't understand where to cut one input and where not to cut an input. So if uh, the input is empty, the latest data should not flow into the, the, the expected standard input thing. And my suggestion always has been, um, sorry, this is the demo page. I have commented this. I'm going to remove it. So right now, if you either do not specify anything or you specify something and you try the terminal uh, in here, you see the latest print enter twice. Then I do test and it works. But you don't want enter your name printed twice because the input was empty. So my suggestion is to not make readline believes, which is readline is an extern readline plugin we're using. Not readline believe the input is empty at all. And here you can see, I, I'm not sure if you can, but I'm gonna zoom, <laughs> zoom in this a lot. This is a zero white space. <laughs> Or uh, uh, ASCII, I don't know if it's in the Unicode space or the ASCII 256 uh, namespace, but basically this tells the um, external read line that it's not that the input was empty, actually. The input was something. The user will never see it because... It's an empty chart. So in this case, I have the same result, except I don't have the double enter your name. So I thought, and I just pushed a merge request or a um, pull request that solves this um, by doing this, but actually it doesn't work. So I'm afraid I was hoping to show like, uh, how about we do this? But basically we have a third party plugin that doesn't really understand the requirement for an empty input. It's like you already print something instead of doing, uh, and I don't know if we should change the the um, documentation or let, uh, let me go back to what, where we are now. So we are here now. Mm. I don't know if we will hint or change the documentation that we probably ask directly instead of print before that input, enter your name. I'm gonna try this right now live. And it's broken. Oh, because there's a it's commented, yeah. 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 So I'm gonna try this live, enter your name, but you see, this is not exactly what users want. So in this case, I should put like a column and then a space so it's more clear. So we should hint that this is the way to go. 
at the same time, I don't feel like this is the way to go. So I feel like if our users do a print, who are you? And then you have a, an empty input. I feel like this should be solved either on external read line side, which is not happening because the the this was on February 22, and I had zero feedback about it. And uh, oh, we should try to understand how to fix this. So this this is my main topic today. Uh, the release, everything is working <laughs> super cool to me, and I'm super happy about it. This thing um, keeps coming up. Uh, it came up once in Discord, and we we worked around it. And it was like, okay, you need to do the, the ugly, invisible chart thing. This, to me, is not a reasonable solution. So we should find a better way to do so. I was working on it. Um, I wonder what to think about it. Should we improve the documentation or should we state we have an issue right now about this? Or should I spend more time trying to understand how to fix this in the read line thing? And that's it. Oh, cool. yeah. Thanks for the demo, Andrea. Um, so my two cents here are that um, actually, um, ah, Discord. Um, the Python way to do it is actually through putting the string in the input function, right? So the what users are trying to do is actually not the Pythonic way. I still think yeah. we, it should work, right? Uh, and I think what you did is the right thing. I'm debated in the docs. I think in the docs, personally, I would suggest using the input function as it was meant to be, but right. just like a, uh, right? But a heads up, you know, heads up, there's this issue, and we just put the blurb, uh, a blurb around uh, yeah. But basically, what you described. Um, a warning block yeah. in the docs. A warning block, yeah. Uh, what do you all think? That, that works good. for me. I'm, I don't have any Pythonic opinion, so that always works for me. But even with the prompt on the JavaScript side on the web, you prompt a question. You don't, you don't just prompt with an yeah. empty thing. So to me, the input in Python should work the same. You input a question and you type the, your answer and, that, and that's it. And yeah. so maybe this is not even a upstream bug, but uh, it's the second time they're complaining about this. And I and I thought, like you said, Fabio, it should just work. Uh, it yeah. doesn't. So I want to fix it, but at the same time, I'm, I'm feeling like, should I really? Because at the same time, if you if you ask for something that doesn't exist, should I put an invisible <laughs> char in the middle that could cause more troubles than than yeah. anything else? Because you cannot compare strings anymore uh, in in a proper way because there is this invi invisible zero width char space char. Um, so yeah, I agree with mm -hmm. you. Um, yeah. But we should yeah. probably in the the effort of improving the documentation, we should probably tackle these yeah. edge cases too and, and explain what's going on. You, but you make a good point. And actually, I think, Fabio, your point is the right answer because it's a, to me, it feels like, you know, when you learn to drive a car, okay, they don't force you into being on the left or the right hand side of the road, depending on which country, you know, you could drive on the wrong side of the road, but, you know, practice tells like you. In like in the UK, we well we we uh, oh man, but let's go into sorry, the history of this, Fabio. One day over a beer, but not right now. <laughs> uh, you can blame Napoleon. Um, uh, but the the point is, is that you have a heuristic. There's Pythonic, or there's this is the way you do it. And if you meet that, and I think the documentation is the right way of doing it, because then when we're on Discord, we can say, well, look, we've mentioned it it's not idiomatic pi script it's not idiomatic python therefore not idiomatic pi script for use to use input like this and every book on the planet that uses the input built in in python has input quotes what is your name space whatever um you know that that's kind of how it's expected to work um so wag finger don't do that you know <laughs> yes actually i will use one thing that you said andrea may is basically reducing significantly my my opinion, my suggestion. 
you you said you know um something like oh yes we can make it work by injecting you know the character and stuff but it may causes may cause more issues right that's that's the main thing i if it was something that really made sense like the work we've been doing to unify the FFIs or other things like as a larger scope, and I think yeah, we should make our effort to just just work. This case almost feels like, ah, do we want to get in more trouble just to fix that very small subset of issues? So I, I I'm leaning towards you know basically what you both also said. That's just addressing the docs for now, and that's it. I don't know, Nick, Andrea. Not only that, but we know a workaround. And whenever there is an edge case, we can say, hey, if you really want to do this so that the, the, the input is in the new line and fully clean, um, this is the workaround you should use. But yes. be aware that, that that's yeah. circumventing the, the uh, best practice we have behind the scene or the pathonic way, as you said. So I'm, I'm OK with this. I can actually close the in the merge request because it's not working so <laughs> i can actually forget about yeah. this and uh, and explain it yeah. uh, but it yeah. should be part of our docs so and these edge cases i think we should note down whenever this happens in discord or or, or in discussions and everywhere else we should probably have a dedicated edge cases section in our docs so yeah. that we can say hey want an empty input after printing that's the solution. Yeah. Uh, actually, that's the workaround, not a solution. It's just a workaround because, and we explained the, the, the because. So I think this is all coming together <laughs> somehow. Yeah. And so, yeah, I agree with all of you and um, happy about the resolution. Good stuff. Thanks. Great. Awesome. Anything else on this topic? Nope. Sweet. Um, so next up, uh, next three topics are mine. Really, really quick ones, to be honest. Uh, very pragmatically, Nicholas, you are uh, hopefully out, not thinking at all about this call or PyScript, enjoying some time off next week. Um, but you're you've been the designated recorder uh, of the calls. Yeah. Um, did you? There's anyone else that you walk through this? uh in the past or can you it, it's it's so easy it's embarrassing um you install obs and you set the source in obs as discord and if you're on mac os uh that's really all you need to do you just need to be aware that the audio is it's recording your speaker audio not the live audio from discord and that's because of some limitation in mac os uh, i did look into it fabio the younger looked into it and he couldn't make any more progress without putting uh, you know huge amounts of effort in so uh, just install obs and set the source as discord and you're good to go um, and press then just press the record button then upload the resulting asset to youtube it just works um i'm happy to walk okay. walk folks through it outside this meeting yeah i was going to suggest that oh sorry andrea you have your hand raised i read windows mac os linux does it has anyone tried on linux because i can i can try it and uh, if it works i'm good to Wait. host the next community call well i would suggest this uh andre um nicholas do you mind setting up a quick call just to try out to. with a small group yeah, of, yeah, yeah. of us yeah happy to happy to uh, okay, so action item, Nicholas, to organize uh, a handoff call. Yeah. Cool. Uh, if there's nothing else on this topic, next one is I. I really just wanted to share um, the. Um, I saw on Twitter the other day uh, that actually um, it's nothing new, but it just reminded me that uh, Sebastian. Uh, Tiangolo for, from Fast API. He also released a, a small library called La Latest Changes, I think. Yeah. That is, is basically a, a CI action for GitHub Actions that uh, help creating Latest Changes blurb for releases. Maybe good, maybe not. 
you know, it may help or not. Just wanted to put it in front of us um, to, to look at it. Um, no action, really just informational. And then uh, the last topic, actually, is there any questions or any comments on this one? Maybe you have, you all have uh, seen it. Uh, th th GitHub does have that feature built in. Uh, it's a, it, it will let you do a, um, you can click a button and it will put the correct GitHub flavored markdown into the uh, release blurb such that when you click on it, when it's finally released, you get the diff in terms of the number of um, pull requests merged and what have you. So you can see since the last release, these five things have been merged. It, it kind of works in mm -hmm. a similar sort of fashion. So there, there's something already built in, but it, it's kind of, to me, that's not human. Uh, that's robot speak. Yeah. And to a yeah. developer, it might be useful in a technical sense, but you know, I just want to see the headline, you know, oh, we've namespaced the FFI under PyScript now for these reasons that, that, you know, make it more intentional and human, but, um, yeah. yeah. Makes sense. Cool. cool. Um, yeah, I, I think his work has a little more than just the default if I remember correctly, but yeah. doesn't matter. Honestly. Yeah. I, I agree with you. Uh, human generated. There's always a human in the process, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, yeah, I agree. I agree. Cool. Uh, last topic is PyCon is coming up. Uh, PyCon US is coming up. Big event, etc. Um, last year we didn't do it. I think this year could be a good idea to have a sprint. Um, I'm not signing up anyone, but if you're going, you know, I was thinking of staying one or two days more just to do that. Um, if you're, whatever. Um, yeah. I just wanted to share that thought. Um, yeah. I'm gonna be there on the day of the Monday and half of Tuesday, my flight yeah. will be kind of middle of the afternoon. So I'll be able to make the morning, leave at lunchtime and, you know, fly back. Um, so day and a half of sprints. Uh, also an open space. We should do a PyScript open space as well. Um, those are always fun to do too. Uh-huh. Um, okay, so I'm, I'm putting like you and I can sync and try to organize it. Um, the open space is a great idea as well, etc. Uh, we can also post on this as we get closer, yeah. right? Um, oftentimes, open spaces are cheap in the sense that you, you can just improvise, yeah, yeah, right? Exactly. But, but I was thinking there would probably be good, would probably be beneficial to be a little more than just the generic PyScript open space, but more like oh, PyScript in education or, you know, for specific flows or, yeah, yeah, or yeah. user bases. Um, but we could, again, we let's... could do something like a PyScript dojo where you turn up mm -hmm. and, you know, do it like the London dojo where we're all doing the same problem, but we're in different groups. And then at the very end, everybody comes together and shows their different solutions to the same problem. And that's always a great because. 99% of the time they don't work or they're knackered or this group did that bit and that group did this other bit. And if you put them together, it would all kind of work really well, but they ne they ran out of time and all of that. So it's always, uh, always good fun um, to do that. Um, I don't know. And if yep. you could say Anaconda will provide pizza and just order a whole bunch of dominoes in, and you know, <laughs> you're guaranteed a good crowd. <laughs> Not sure we're allowed to do that. <laughs> You are in the presence of two Italians, and it, did you just say pizza and Domino's? Domino's pizza. <laughs> I'm waiting for the kind of... <laughs> I, I, I was so excited until that sentence, and uh, I'm like, no. Oh, Man, you on. got it all the way until you said Domino's. Ah, uh, <sighs> okay. Some... Pi okay. You banged to rights. You've got me. You've got me. <laughs> Anyway, um, yeah. <laughs> but yes, I, I love love the the thought, love the idea. Um, let's make sure that we think about it and and create fun stuff and um, yeah. fun ways to to engage with the community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool stuff. Awesome. Uh, anything else? Sweet. Okay. Yeah. I'll stop the recording. Um... Y'all, thank you all for for joining. See you next.